Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Captain Mike. Welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. It is December 1, and that means kite fishing and sail fishing is really already in full swing up and down uh, the southeast coast and certainly even across the Keys here. Uh, kite fishing, while incredibly popular and incredibly effective throughout the year, now is really when you want to get into this game if you're not already there. However, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today is going to be an advanced tip uh, for guys that really are already dialed in. You already know how to fly the kites. You already know how to fish multiple baits from the kites, right? And now we're going to take it to the next level, and I'm going to share with you a tip that's really worked out well for me, and I know it'll work out well for you. You know, traditionally speaking, whenever we're kite fishing, uh, when we're drifting in particular, we'll fish a kite off the stern here, we'll fish another kite up off the bow, and we'll fish three lines off of each kite. So we have six kite lines out there. Okay. Um, and this is regardless if we're fishing or drifting for sailfish or king mackerel, dolphin, because we're really targeting everything. Uh, but especially now with the sailfish, there's a slight modification that I want you to make that I'm certain is going to get you more bites. First and foremost, I want you to eliminate that float. And you know exactly what float I'm talking about on the line. You may not think it's significant, but those floats actually catch quite a bit of breeze, quite a bit of air. And that will affect how your bait is swimming in the water. It'll pull your bait up, not only to the surface, but even out of the surface as well. And then you're constantly adjusting. Now, great, we all know that those floats are in a sense not only strike indicators but they really help us gauge where our lines are well that's why it's so important that you continue to fish the high vis line i fished that 20 pound diamond line high vis you can clearly see that color there the chartreuse they also have the orange crush really really easy to see my lines going up to the kite then coming back down toward the water now what i do next is 20 feet up the line, or let me rephrase that, at the end of that chartreuse running line, I'll tie on 20 feet of diamond presentation, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm really going stealthy here. I'm taking my kite game up to another level and you can too. You're at that level right now. You're dialed in, you know what you're doing. You know how to fly those baits. You know how to fly that kite. You know how to make all of those adjustments. Now it's time for you to increase your strike ratio as well. And that's by going lighter and stealthier and more natural. Remember that we're fishing a circle hook. Okay, it's a 70 VMC number 7385. It's a relatively small but incredibly strong circle hook and certainly big enough for goggle eyes, uh, ballyhoo, big pilchards, uh, you know, obviously the prime baits that you're fishing off the kite. Certainly the goggle eyes, even small blue runners, things to that nature that you can bridle that hook to, or I should say bridle the hook to the bait. Again, another important tip, but not what we're sharing today. Today it's all about going stealthy. So Again, I've eliminated that float altogether. There's no float on my line. I'm fishing, you know, again, my, my typical Chaos K or KC 15 to 30 pound class seven foot live bait rods matched to a Daiwa size 50H right here loaded with 20 pound diamond line, as I mentioned. It's a lever drag single speed. This is my typical kite fishing outfit. I've got that 20 feet of diamond presentation, 30 pound fluorocarbon tied to that main line with a little blood knot, you know, uh, any connection that you want to use to connect similar size mono to similar size mono. The blood knot works perfect for me. And then, as I mentioned, that 70 circle hook at the end tied on with a very small loop knot. That's it. There's nothing else on the line. There's no additional hardware. There are no additional connections. It's incredibly stealthy, you know, and as long as you can tie these two knots perfect, hey, you're in good shape, right? Of course, I'm going to slide a ceramic ring on here, and that's when I'm going to clip to my release clip. But other than that, there's nothing else in the entire system. Now, what that's going to do, it allows my bait to be in the water and truthfully, Listen, I don't care if my bait's right up on the surface, flickering right up on the surface where I can see it. Yeah, that's great, but if it's 5 feet down, 8 feet down, 10, 15 feet down, I'm okay with that too because all of those predators, the sailfish, the dolphin, the cobia, blackfin tuna, they all hunt up or near the surface. And trust me, if your goggle eye is 12 feet below the surface versus 2 feet below the surface, they're going to find it, they're going to eat it. 
And by not using the floats, you've got a much more natural presentation. Your bait's going to fluctuate, and that's okay. You're going to have to make less adjustments than you normally would because usually guys are so keyed in on those floats, they're like, oh, I got to let out a couple feet. Oh, I got to bring up a couple feet. And they almost have to feel like they, they have to keep their floats perfectly in line, and it's a constant game of up and down. You just don't have to do that without the floats, okay? Your bait's in the water. It's up on the surface. It looks natural. Natural, that's all that matters. And again, you'll be able to track them with the high vis line. And when one of the lines goes in an odd direction, guess what's happening, baby? You're getting a bite, okay? Or you're about to get crushed. So I want you to try that this season. You know, the 30 pound may seem a little light to you, but it really isn't. These sailfish are getting smarter and smarter. And because you're fishing with that circle hook, you're going to get them in the corner of the mouth. You're only fishing 20 pound main line anyway. Okay, so keep that in mind. Scale down to that 30. I don't know what you're fishing now. Maybe it's 50, 60, 40, 80. I have no idea. Everybody uses a range of lines. Um, but we found going from 50, then down to 40, and now down to 30 fluorocarbon, we're definitely seeing an increase in our bites on the kite baits. If you're fishing particularly for king mackerel or if there's wahoos around, of course, using an Albright knot, you can add a trace of wire with a stinger rig. That's not going to affect the presentation in any way. Just like I said, just add that wire. Uh, you could fish a J-hook, a lot of different variations. But real easy. Also, another huge benefit, I could reel that fish all the way to the rod tip. Okay, I can handle that fish all the way to the rod tip, right there, right to the surface. There's nothing stopping that leader. Okay, so that's another huge advantage, especially if you're fishing with limited hands on the boat. You don't have long leaders coming off the floats that you have to hand line or anything like that, uh, or even wrap around the reel when you're moving from point A to point B here much much simpler yeah it's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to fishing without the floats but at the end of the day i'm telling you you're going to be a more successful angler and remember for more tips on a wide variety of topics across all of florida here anything related to saltwater fishing make sure you subscribe to florida sport fishing tv plus that's f sftv.com. Like I said, over 300 instructional videos, seminars, rigging stations, uh, complete episodes, plus a 24-7 helpline. Again, that's fsftv.com. Thanks, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the water.